Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's lecture, as we discussed, or we uh, told, I told you that I am going to discuss uh, about immunoblotting, another very important and very popular technique that we use. Many things can be done with this. Okay, mostly the ELISA, what we discussed in last class, ELISA we can detect and uh, estimate the antigen. But in ELISA, what we cannot do is we cannot tell the molecular weight of the antigen. Right, because there is no scope of knowing the molecular weight. In this technique, we can estimate not as good as ELISA, but we can estimate basically relative estimation and we can detect definitely. At the same time, we can also tell the molecular weight of the antigen that uh, we are interested or looking for. Okay. Also, we can go for whether antibody is there or not, how good the antibody is that we can do, but normally, normally this technique is mostly we see for characterization or do for characterization of the antigen or the protein, but same definitely antibody also we can do. So, let me discuss very quickly that what is this immunoblotting, um, immunoblotting to what we can do and what is the basic thing what actually how we can know the molecular weight of the protein. Okay. Let us start. So, this particular technique immunoblotting is also known as western blot. Okay. You know northern blot, you heard about southern blot. So, this is western blot. Western blot western blot this is also immunoblotting okay western blot the first thing is is no uh, in antibody antigen is required first thing we run a protein gel polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis is also known as page many time we run sds page okay SD sodium rhodicyl sulfate page, this is the denaturing gel. Okay, you can run native gel anyway, you have to run a protein gel. So, in protein gel, what we can do is in protein gel, you know that you have to make a gel first, and this gel you run, you make a gel of you make a gel of polyacrylamide, there are certain well. Okay. So, what we do is you load protein and run and this is the negative and this is positive. If it is SDS, SDS makes all the protein negatively charged. So, when you run or give the uh, uh, electric current positive negative the potential is like this, then protein will migrate from negative to positive because all the protein molecule in the solution sorry. So, all the protein molecule in the solution is negatively charged. So, if you pass the electric current or uh, <coughs> Electro, start electrophoresis protein will migrate this way okay. and that is also not visible. You can stain it by Kumasi staining and see the protein, but suppose it is a Kumasi stain. Okay. If it is a Kumasi stain what we will see is after staining and destaining suppose there are I am just drawing one lane. So, we will get multiple band right in a given solution in a extract cell extract there are so many proteins they will distribute according to their molecular weight because lowest molecular weight will be here highest molecular weight will be here because heavy cannot run fast okay and in one of the length i this will be known protein that's normally we call it marker what kind of known protein that means i know that the bottom one is 14 kilodalton second one is 21 kilodalton then 35 then 60 45 then 66 so that what is this this is called known marker Okay, this is marker. Okay, it is called ladder also sometimes, but normally in case of protein molecular weight marker that you can buy commercially. 
when you buy a marker solution which band is what molecular weight that also will be given with the um, seed that when you buy something. So, exactly you can tell which band is what size. So, now if this is the band suppose this is 14, 21 this is 35 ok this is 35 kilo Dalton this is known. So, any protein in this region any protein in this region this protein is very similar ok you can tell this is very close to 35. So, it is most likely 35 you cannot tell exactly to tell the exact molecular of the, of the protein you have to do the mass spectroscopy, but normally you do not do it. So, here so this one, but here up to here so many proteins. So, not necessarily that suppose you know your molecular weight of the protein is close to 35 assume that ok you know your protein, but in cell there are 4 to 5 thousand different proteins are there and there are many may be 35,000. So, when you are seeing one single band here ok suppose thick band that does not mean that there is only one protein. Even after that your protein of interest may not be there because that may not express because all protein not always express every time that may be your experiment you would like to see whether at a particular condition your protein is expressing or not. In ELISA you can see but whether ELISA is a false positive or giving some non specific count you cannot see. So, confirmation will be done by this uh, um, uh, molecular weight because ELISA positive and in south western blot if you can detect and you can tell that uh, the molecular weight of the protein is close to 35 then you are as a scientist or as a um, uh, doctor or as a pathologist you will be much more confident no what I am telling seeing is fine. Okay because it is supposed to be 35 it is showing 35 it is positive in both uh, ELISA as well as western blood that means, it is confirmatory as well as mental satisfaction and genuinity will be very good there is no non specific interaction. So, what we do? So, after this after running the gel whatever this band and all these things you would not see ok marker you can buy pre stain marker and you can see, but other thing you may or may not see and that for that what we will do is ok. So, that whatever we will do is so you take this protein gel we take the protein gel take it out from the gel apparatus I am sorry I cannot show you the gel apparatus how it open, but gel is a very gel like structure thin it is not very thick you have to handle carefully thickness also depends like you can make thicker you can make a thinner ok that depends on what kind of protein you are isolating. So, what we do is we take this we take this protein gel let me make the color code same. So, you take this protein gel which is little thick ok this is the gel of oh sorry suppose this is the uh, this is the gel ok this is thick this is gel ok. So, after running the gel you take it out and this is the this is the sorry for this this is your gel and we take this gel on top of a filter paper because so that just a support because gel is very. So, we take a gel on top of a filter paper. So, we take a filter paper we take a filter paper put that gel ok. On top of this gel we put a membrane same size. So, whatever the size you are seeing here same size filter paper same size membrane membrane is what membrane we uh, we use either nitrocellulose membrane or the membrane is P P V D F which is very popular now polyvinyl difluoride membrane polyvinyl difluoride ok. If anybody is having problem understanding just type in the net P V D F membrane you will get all the details what to do what not to do and how to use those who are interested more 
and somebody if you already done this experiment for you it is uh, very simple and straightforward. So, here uh, on top of this uh, blue line is this uh, Portman filter paper just to give a support and PVDF membrane that you cut exactly in the same size and you put on top of this gel. Okay. Then you put again, then you put again one fil filter paper again a support. So, what is happening? You are taking a filter paper, putting your gel, then your membrane, the PVDA membrane, then you putting another filter paper. So, basically you are making a sandwich. Okay. Basically, you are making a sandwich of two filter paper in between gel and membrane is there. So, two filter paper is there in between gel and membrane is there. So, in this orientation, so and you have to remember one thing that your membrane is in the top. Okay, your membrane is in the top, I will tell why I am telling. So, above it what we use actually there are certain sponge we add just to give another just buffer. So, what is giving we are giving a sponge. Okay. It is there is no gap between it just for the picture I am giving the gap, but it is all in contact and there should be no air gap no air bubbles. So, every time what we do is we put one say suppose this is a gel we put the membrane then we put a roller on it. Okay, we put a roller on it to push out all the bubble. So, there should not be any bubble. Then this whole thing, whole thing, so we make this way filter paper, filter paper and this, then two sponge both side, we made this, then the whole sandwich we make like this. So, we made this way and make like this. So, this one we fit into the same gel apparatus, okay. same gel apparatus. So, now what we have is whole thing is you have a sandwich where everything. So, what we have first we have one two sponge, then we have two filter paper, then we have the gel okay, and then we have filter. So, same thing I just put vertically. This mixture is completely packed. Now, you put the filter paper and you remember gel is in the left hand side and the membrane is the right hand side. Now, we start the electrophoresis again. What we will do is now we will give positive charge this side and negative charge this side. What will happen? So, gel was done like this. Then now, I take the gel put the filter paper and put the electric current positive that side and this is the filter paper. So, if this is the filter paper and this is the gel, if the positive is this side what will happen? All the protein that was in the gel okay, it will be transferred to this paper. Okay. Clear? So, there will be no protein in the, so whatever there it was in the gel, in the gel that is transferred to this yellow paper. I am erasing everything again or rather let me put this back. So, what will happen is now I have now I have one filter paper which you cannot see anything, which you cannot see anything. Only thing if you use a pre stain marker then you can see the protein band the same protein band whatever you saw before. Okay. That is visible nothing else your protein band nothing is there. Now, what I will do is same as ELISA. Now, somewhere your protein is here first I will add first I will add primary antibody into this paper. So, I will take this paper in a tray small tray add the primary antibody solution incubate for one hour what will happen? If some protein, suppose my protein is here, okay, some protein is here which is not visible, okay, maybe you cannot see also well because very faint. So, if I add primary antibody out of 1000 proteins, 
my antibody is not going to bind all the protein. If it is specific, it will only bind here. All the antibody will concentrate where the protein of interest is there. So, now if I draw it thick or separately, suppose this thing I am saying. So, this is the band and your antibody, suppose the anti, uh, uh, antibody will all come here. So, all the paper protein, is, uh, protein may be there, but antibody is going to bind to the specific band where my protein of interest is there, it is like that. So, now if I use a secondary antibody, now if I use a secondary antibody against that antibody, now I hope you understand the previous one. Now, if you secondary antibody it will bind here and the secondary antibody is just like the ELISA which is labeled with enzyme, which what enzyme? This is also same enzyme, what if I am remembering you again HRP horse radish peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase clear. So, this enzyme doing the same thing colorless substrate colorful product, but there is a nice difference between ELISA and western blood. What is the difference? Here the substrate is different. What? Why? Because you have to choose a substrate so that product is colorful, but insoluble in water. Remember that product is colorful, but insoluble in water. What we will do? What we do actually? We take a tray, we put your paper at primary antibody, incubate it will bind, then secondary antibody it will in, uh, it will incubate the red one will go and bind you add the substrate okay, and product will come and if the product is soluble it will go away. But if the product if the product is insoluble what will happen if the product is insoluble suppose the product color is green okay, product color is colorless and the product color is green what will happen? You will see wherever the reaction is happening, it is depositing there okay. and gradually you will see a green color is appearing. If it is soluble, it will go away, but if it is insoluble, it will deposit on that white paper because the PVDF is membrane is white, you can see a nice green line. If green line is coming and if you know that this is 35, this is 45, you can guess okay, this is close to 40 or close to um, 30 you can calculate very accurately even the relative is because you can plot it and then figure it out from log scale I am not going in detail, but comparing with the marker you can tell what is the molecular weight of the protein. So, if your protein solution have your protein of interest then only you will, will get the band. So, if appearance of band is telling you the protein is there molecular weight of the band you can understand and that means, you can also tell the molecular weight of the antigen. This is much more confirmatory than ELISA and that is why HIV test you can go HIV test immediate test is ELISA that okay, some blood sample it is HIV positive, but confirmatory test is always done by this western blot or the immunoblotting technique. Okay. So, it is very similar principle same antigen antibody reaction same uh, enzyme is linked and uh, the similar kind of uh, reaction is happening, but device is different here it is first resolved in SDS page or normal page or native page then it is transferred to a membrane then it is like we detect like ELISA. Okay. So, ELISA we directly uh, load the protein in well here we resolve the protein mixture, okay. but here what is happening another difference with ELISA is in ELISA protein remain in native form which we are not denaturing it here it is denatured. Right? What is the problem of denaturation? Not much, but you, if you remember my uh, epitope class what I told I am just telling you again there are two types of epitope one is linear epitope another is conformational epitope. So, if the antibody raised again conformational epitope 
then you cannot detect in SDS because protein is denatured, conformation is not there. So, that antibody will not detect the protein in western blood, but they can detect in ELISA because there you are using the protein in native form. So, some protein or some antibody more specifically if it can may be positive in ELISA, but showing nothing in western blood that does not mean it is wrong. It may be the antibody is against a conformational epitope that is why it is not picking up phone because if you run SDS page it is denatured, but if you run native page and then also you are not seeing it then you have to think something else. I am not going to go detail on that I just give an idea of how this native and conformational epitope works. Okay. So, this is is going this is going to tell you about the molecular. So, ELISA and western both can detect and estimate western can give you something extra which is which can tell you the molecular rate of the antigen. Okay. So, this is one uh, another important technique. Th next important technique is immunolocalization. Okay. 